Birds are known to play a crucial role in pollination and they perform their job quite well. However, they can be nasty too by damaging crops and farms, leading to a great loss for farmers. There is a kind of avian species in the sub-Saharan African which is considered the enemy of farmers. The species is called the red-billed quilia and they are quite hard to manage. Don't let the cuteness of this little red-beaked bird deceive you. Because when they travel by air to strategic locations in search of farms with acres of rice, they dive into action and feast on crops at sight. The quilia birds have continued to wreak havoc across northern Nigeria in years, from the northeast stretching across north central to the northwest in Kebi State, Nigeria. Like an air raid of enemy aircraft, swarms of quilia birds occupied cultivated land in Argungun local government area of Kebi State, where an estimated estimate of 100 farmers lost about 75,000 hectares of rice through the dry season rice plantations last week. Will the weekend hit worse? The menace of quilia birds to farmers in Nigeria, especially those at the bordering states of the country, will be the point of discussion tonight on the program. I am your carrier, Clinton. Welcome to Nigeria Today. Joining me in the studio to uh, uh, deal on the issue of the aquila bear, the uh, menace, to, menace to agriculture, is uh, Professor Akim Abolade Oyerindi, Dean, Faculty of Agriculture, University of Abuja. He's also the National Secretary, Etymological Society of Nigeria. Welcome to Nigeria today. Thank you, ma. <laughs> Also joining us uh, via Zoom is Professor Musa Ichiaku Ahmed, Pioneer Vice Chancellor, Federal University of Agriculture, Zuru, Kebi State. Professor Musa Ichiaku Ahmed is a prototypical mechanized agriculturist with versatility in bioinformatics and information and communication technology. Good to have you with us. It's my pleasure. Thank you. I'll start with you, uh, Prof. Uh, so just tell us uh, the experience. Uh, we had uh, the invasion of the Aquilia birds on the uh, farms in uh, uh, Kebi State. Tell us what it was like and the experience. Uh, the Aquilia birds are a serious menace to agriculture in Kebi State, being bordering Niger. Uh, you know, uh, this... Uh, Granivorous birds usually infest the sub-Saharan Africa, particularly the Sahel and the semi-Sahel regions uh, in the northern part of Nigeria. Its effect is uh, most felt in Kebi State, Sokoto, and Zamfara. And Kebi State, being an agrarian area, uh, you find that uh, the, their losses are more than the other two states. Uh, particularly the dry season farming in KB state of rice and, you know, sorghum in some places, uh, you find that uh, uh, apart from, you know, the other things that uh, aggravate uh, the uh, exigencies of having dry season farming, these uh, quilla birds are a serious menace. Very tiny birds, not more than uh, uh, 20 grams at adult age, but you find that per day they can consume as much as half of their weight, that is 10 uh, grams. And because they come, they are, you know, nomadic uh, super colonies, they come in hundreds of thousands and millions. You find that uh, when you look at the effect, uh, it will be astronomical. And particularly the dry season farming, a lot of uh, crop yield is lost to these birds. And the way government has been working to mitigate the effect of these uh, bats in Kebi State has been telling on their resources. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Akim, uh, you've heard him there, the experience with Kebi State, of course, Sokoto and Zamfara, and of, a, a lot of uh, other states uh, that uh, uh, the Kila birds have um, over the years you know, uh, ravaged the farmlands. 
So tell us how devastating can these birds be? The, the concept of uh, migratory pest, mm -hmm. which a uh, quail bird is one of them, uh, is, a, is accustomed to agricultural production because uh, the birds are looking for, for survivors as well. Because when you talk about an ecosystem, in an agroecosystem, you have different of uh, pests and um, uh, pathogens that are associated with uh, agricultural production. Mm -hmm. So apart from quail bird, we have uh, the army worm, we have the monkey, and uh, we have uh, the uh, locust gregaria, which we call locust, which uh, they call fara in the north, which uh, the all these are migratory pests. They usually move in swarm, and uh, in wherever they get to, is always a catastrophic uh, damage that you experience on the field. And uh, the the emerging thing about uh, migratory pests is that uh, they are transboundary. They are not limited to an environment. Mm -hmm. At least, uh, if not that uh, there is a, a collapse in the monitoring of uh, this kind of pest in Nigeria, you will find out that uh, it's a seasonal thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, as soon as it gets to our neighborhood, in the previous time, the Nigerian pest control unit will have get ready to checkmate those pests at the entrance. Mm -hmm. So the advent of uh, waiting until when the catastrophe, when the destruction has been done, is not done in uh, agricultural products, more than agricultural practices, mm -hmm. because you must know that any crop that you plant or any plant that you establish, you must involve the plant doctors. Who are the plant doctors? These are people that are well experienced in the field of uh, pest management. So those plant doctor will have put as part of your plan in uh, your proposal, your uh, business plan, which you want to use to cultivate your land. They will have put pest management as part of it. So in part of that, they will have informed you doing simulation and modeling that this crop, most of the time that the quail beds comes in, is always at the tasseling stage. Tasseling means is now putting something like a flower on top of it, mm -hmm. and that time the grain will now start coming up. The grain of the rice, or the sorghum, or millet, or whatsoever you have. Because they always synchronize their life to the crop production. So to a, a farmer that has embedded, that has put that as part of his plan, the farmer will have provided what is the option to checkmate them? The major problem we have is that uh, even the indigenous ways of managing this, majority of us don't appreciate our indigenous practice. The traditional people within the region of the Northeast and the host of other, have, they have ways in which they manage this that we can now use the advancement that we have now to make it better. Okay, uh, Professor Akim, I will have to stop you there because okay. we'll get to that point where you are right now. Okay. But first of all, I want to hear from Professor Busai. You rightly mentioned that it's a seasonal thing, and this is not the first time that we're having these kinds of uh, invasion. We've had them, like in 2016, there was an alarm raised by commissioners citing that uh, the, uh, they, they had the, uh, the quillabets in their states. We had from Kebis and Farasokuto Jigawa and, you know, a, whole, a host of uh, other states that uh, raised the alarm. And and so on in 2019, 2022, they flagged up a lot of uh, measures, indicating that this is not the first time that um, uh, these uh, kinds of situations are arising. So what has the state, like in Kebi State where you are, uh, Professor uh, uh, Musa, what has the state done or what did they do to ensure that uh, these kinds of invasions are being averted? Uh, you know, this is not the first time, you know, it's a perennial problem that has been over time, you know, reoccurring. And going by the historic antecedents, if you look at uh, before now, the problem of the farmers uh, used to be the locust. But you see, because there are some changes in human behavior and people are eating them up, you find that uh, nobody is talking about the locusts. 
you know, as uh, destructive entities in the farm. But uh, the same thing, the approach that is going on now by way of using chemical are different uh, from what used to happen. That is to say, uh, we can perhaps look at uh, areas like uh, developing some other technology, including them on the value chain. We can use these uh, birds as a source of protein for livestock feed. I know recently there were proposals by some agriculturalists uh, in the government agencies that uh, there should be advocacy to uh, encourage people to be eating these bats because it is a good source of protein, you know, uh, from the inference drawn from researchers. But I believe it is a little bit more difficult to convince people to eat these 10 gram, you know, adult age bats. It is a lot more easier to perhaps use them in the production of uh, livestock feed, you know, uh, protein. If uh, people are encouraged and they are bringing it, very simple equipment can be developed uh, from within Nigeria so that it could be processed. Instead of looking for fish meal or maybe granite cake, you can use this in as, you know, the protein inclusion. And on our own part, in my university, research is already ongoing to see how we can produce uh, bad resistant seeds. KB is known for rice production. Uh, my university has been given the license by the National Seed Council to propagate foundation seeds to be given to farmers. And we went beyond that to see how we can produce uh, seeds, not only with early maturing, but also and resistant to some diseases, but also to be resistant to some of these uh, menace or birds. That is to say, we have to explore uh, some of their biochemical and phenotypical genetic traits to see that uh, birds would be reluctant to pest on them. If you look at these birds, uh, uh, you find that uh, they don't really prefer the crops that we produce. It is in absence of the seeds of the wild grasses that uh, when they finish them up, then they have to move on to our crops. So I believe uh, the use of chemical may not be the best option because we are really destroying our environment. Perhaps we can still continue with it uh, side by side, trying to introduce some of these technologies that we are mentioning. You know, my university has some few professors who are good in bioinformatics, biotechnology, to see how we can produce seeds that uh, would be deterrent to some of these birds. So I think uh, uh, this is the way perhaps in addition to what government has been doing uh, to see that we mitigate the effect of these uh, bats on our crops to, you know, ensure that, uh, you know, all these problems of food insecurity uh, and food production can uh, augment it. You talked about um, the, the, the seeds you have, but how healthy will these uh, seeds be for human consumption? Yes, uh, the bats, they are safe, they are good protein, uh, but you know because of their size, they are smaller than a day-old chick. If you can imagine how, you know, a broiler chick, when you first bring it to the house to grow it, you know, that one would be like maybe 35 grams, but uh, when you are talking of a bat that is 10 grams at adult age, you find that, uh, I don't know, if you have to eat such birds, you have to crush it with their bones. So it is a lot more easier to look at concepts of introducing it as a protein inclusion in livestock feed. Uh, in China today, you find that uh, they no longer bother about fish meal because it is a lot more difficult to get uh, feral fish, you know, uh, in their waters because uh, over the years these things are dwindling. So what they have moved to is using black fly. They allow black fly to produce a lot of larvae and these larvae are processed with very simple 
equipment and then it is an excellent uh, protein inclusion in livestock feed so i am thinking because my university is partnering with a company in china to see if we can perhaps look at it in this direction instead of growing the black fly why don't we see how we can trap these uh, uh, birds that is the red bill birds, the beavers, so that we can use them as animal protein. By the time you introduce such technology and people are making a living out of it, you would not find these birds around because people would, you know, find a way of getting them, you know, and use them as protein. And in this way, you find that government would not have to spend these billions of naira that is being spent in the control of these birds and also degrading our environment. I think it's a very good idea if government will look at it in this direction. Very much. I was actually asking if the uh, the best resistance seats were safe, but we'll talk about that uh, after the break. Uh, let's pause here for a break and take a listen to how menacing the Kulia bears were last week in Arugungu, Kebbi State, as put together in a report by correspondent Abubakar. Abubakar. Quail vets in their thousands began to attack the farms over the weekend, raging through dry season rice farms estimated to be about 75,000 hectares. The destruction on the major parts of the Argungu Fadama has affected rice production in the area and by extension the country. Many farmers are still counting their losses. We are in serious problem. Apart from high cost of fuel price and fertilizer, here are the quail beds. One cannot eat his breakfast at home. If not, the beds will eat all his rice field. Welcome back. It's still Nigeria today, and my guests are still with me, the two profs. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, uh, Professor Kim, you had uh, quite a lot of uh, 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 issues he raised there and um, how the efforts they are making in their university. However, they got, the federal government has, uh, has over the years you know, conducted aerial spray to kill you know, the invading killer birds. In 2019, we had one, 2022, 2018, and so on over the years. Now, it seems uh, the killer birds are becoming immune to the aerial spray. So what other strategy can, they, can be adopted? Like I know you were about mentioning some of them. What other strategy can be adopted to ensure that uh, we rid ourselves of these uh, birds? You know, the first thing is uh, knowing the the biological, mm -hmm. uh, when you said the biology of the quail birds, because in uh, pest management, the first thing we do is uh, to know the pest cycle. Mm -hmm. Some of them, we say, if you want to control, it's not when they have in in infection or infestation mm -hmm. on the feed that you now be struggling. You don't do that in pest management, mm -hmm. because uh, we don't even advise the use of uh, synthetic pesticide, because that is highly dangerous to the environment it will destroy the quail base and uh, other beneficial organisms within the area. Mm -hmm. So we usually advise that uh, the first thing you do, and that is the concept we do in pest management within the hub of uh, where, like my university and other universities and uh, uh, colleges of agriculture, where we manage mm -hmm. pests. What we do is uh, you, you synchronize the plan of that pest management with your crop production. It's not that when you want to produce crop, you're only thinking of fertilizer, thinking of water, thinking of uh, soil. You must know that whenever you cultivate uh, plants, the next thing is that the friend to the plant will surely come. So having planned for the friend of the plant is how do I checkmate the essences of this pest? Some time ago in Nigeria, we have a pest control training institute in Kaduna. It's still there, but I don't think it's active as uh, what we have before. That pest control uh, training institute have uh, some uh, aircraft, which they used to checkmate all this. But uh, uh, subsequently, uh, uh, let's say recently, most of the uh, uh, the pest control where they spray those chemicals, 
is based on hired aircraft, which is not economical for the country. But taking advantage of what we have, there's no problem that doesn't have its own advantage. Like what Prof said, if we now have a way of harvesting those quilla bears as they are coming, if we cannot checkmate them at the boundary before entering Nigeria, mm -hmm. we can now harvest them using nets and a host of other eco-friendly technology. If we harvest them, we turn them into feed resources or alternative feed source, where you now have one simple uh, machine that can crush it and turn it into what we can use in animal feed production. We are, presently now we're having highly expensive animal feed production for our uh, poultry and the host of other animals that we are rearing because we are, don't take the advantage of the alternative feed source. The alternative feed stuff, these are things that will lower the cost of production of the feed. So the fact remains that we know it's a problem that we have uh, the invasion of the of the quilla bed, we should think of how do we take it to advantage. Mm -hmm. Where you have the feather, where you have the feather meal, where like uh, when it discussed about the black ants, where you have uh, the maggot meal, this kind of uh, things, if we collect the, 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 the beds and we now harness them somewhere, after a while, we can even harvest the maggot and use it to produce animal food. But these are simple technology. Because the major problem we have is that uh, when people talk, people will be thinking of an advanced technology mm -hmm. and they will be thinking that it's not even feasible, it's not possible. These are things that we can use the minimal cost, uh, we talk, call it intermediate technology, that can be designed by our research institution, our university, where we can, immediately we harvest this thing, we turn them, we call it waste to waste. We turn them from the, the, the one-term destruction that they are doing, it means the farmer will not even lose. If farmer know that this thing has high protein content, that instead of him looking for normal, looking for cow, looking for cattle to buy, that the farmer can harvest this and add it to the menu. The, most of the other country, when you go to China, people will say, ah, Chinese, they eat everything. It's not <laughs> that they eat everything, but what they do is that they, they know the economic value of what you have. Yeah. The maggot meal produces more protein than the conventional use of uh, soya bean and a host of other uh, feed stuff. So the, the fact remains that what we should do is the, to capitalize on the advent of this presently. But later in future, we should have projection. We should have plan on how can we curtail this kind of migratory pest for not getting to our fields. It's possible. If we can arrest them at our boundary, at least the advent of this pest will have seen our neighbors, the Chad, the Niger, the most of the countries, Sudan, because the migratory pests usually move from one country to the other. As they are coming, we can target them within the simulation and uh, uh, the, the, the modern technology, the GPS and the host of internet of thin apparatus, mm -hmm. you can monitor the speed at which they are coming and you know when to check with them. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Kim. There, I know we still have a lot to talk about about this uh, uh, Kilia Betts, but then uh, we just have to go because <laughs> we don't have all the time in our hands. <clears throat> Well, but, but before we go, we just go to uh, Prof. Professor uh, 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 Musa just one more time. What would be your advice to the government? I mean, the state, uh, the federal, state, and of course, the local governments, you know, because if we really want to achieve the food security uh, uh, in the country, the killer bed invasion will not really be too... Uh, yeah, with the invasion, of course, we really have a problem there. And also other pests invasion. What would be your advice to the government? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, if you look at it, uh, what is happening in the control major of these bats is uh, not uh, far away from flaring our gas at the refinery. You see, when they do a reconnaissance survey, 
on the nest and the roosting area of these birds. Then they move in the night and perhaps, you know, uh, put some kind of fire or sometimes even dynamite to kill these birds, you know, using almost a slash hammer to kill, you know, an ant. So I believe, you know, uh, we can still find a way of uh, instead of uh, destroying them, you know, using them as source of protein. And that is one way. Then secondly, it is good uh, if uh, government is doing a lot, spending a lot of money on the use of chemical and also other areas. But I believe we can still complement this by perhaps, you know, getting uh, researches funded by the government to see how we can produce variety thank you. Thank you very of much, crops that can. <laughs> we don't have uh, time. <laughs> we don't have the time. <laughs> but uh, I know some of the time we'll have to talk more on this uh, issue. <laughs> Well, that's it on Nigeria today. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, Professor Akim Abolade Oyerindi, Dean, Faculty of Agriculture, University of Abuja, National, he's also the National Secretary, Etymological Society of Nigeria. Thank you so much Thank for sharing you, your thoughts. Thank you. And also to Professor mm -hmm. Musa Ishiaku Ahmed, the prototypical mechanized agriculturist with versatility in bioinformatics and information and communication technology. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you. And also to uh, uh, viewer, thank you so much for being a part of this. Remember, the program Nigeria Today airs weekday at 7.30 p.m. on NTA News 24. You can also watch this and other episodes on www.youtube.com slash NTA News 24. I'm your carrier, Clinton. Bye-bye.